Lamentations of Sodom In the book of Genesis in the Bible, there are records of two ancient cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. These cities were notorious for their citizens' wickedness and were ultimately cursed by divine beings. In the end, they were destroyed by heavenly fire. The names of these two cities have become synonymous with cities of sin in Western culture and are often used as metaphors for wrongdoing in various literary works. Even today, as common knowledge, it's worth exploring and savoring the legendary story recorded in the Bible. The story takes place during the time of Abraham, around 1600 BCE. At that time, Abraham led his people on a long journey from the city of Ur in the lower Mesopotamian region to Canaan, the promised land flowing with milk and honey. As they passed through Sodom, Abraham's nephew Lot was drawn to its prosperity and decided to settle there. Abraham, the tenth-generation descendant of Adam and Eve, lived to the age of 175. He had three wives, Sarah, Hagar, and Keturah, and fathered eight sons. Abraham is a shared ancestor and prophet in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. One day, Abraham received a revelation from God, because of the widespread immorality and unrepentant sins of Sodom and neighboring cities, God decided to rain down fire upon them. Abraham pleaded earnestly with God, who repeatedly relented. Finally, God promised to spare the cities if even ten righteous people could be found within them. True to the promise, two angels descended to Sodom. One evening, Lot encountered them at his doorstep and warmly invited them into his home for rest, food, and lodging. However, the men of the city gathered outside Lot's house, demanding that the angels be handed over to them for their own desires. Lot, a man of integrity, offered his two beloved daughters to protect the innocent angels, but was met with refusal. The crowd insisted on seeing the angels themselves. Faced with no other choice, the angels intervened, blinding the mob and preventing them from finding Lot's door. The next morning, the angels urgently instructed Lot to flee the city with his family before God's wrath descended upon it. Lot's sons-in-law dismissed the warning, but Lot hesitated. The angels forcibly led Lot, his wife, and their two daughters out of the city, commanding them not to look back. As they fled, they were a cosmic event. Fiery hailstones rained down from the sky, engulfing Sodom and its inhabitants. The once prosperous land turned into an enormous open-air crematorium. Strong and swift, led his daughters into the safety of the wilderness. However, his wife, in a moment of panic, looked back and was instantly transformed into a pillar of salt by the sulfuric fire. This devastating event also affected four other cities, Gamara, Adma, Zeboim, and Zor. The story of the burning of the five cities has become a biblical legend, illustrating the consequences of wickedness and divine judgment. The unimaginable horror of the inferno forever etched these cities into history. And so, the once fertile and renowned land became a desolate wasteland, a stark reminder of the consequences of sin. The tale of Sodom and Gomorrah continues to resonate across cultures and serves as a cautionary tale about morality and divine justice. Instantaneous volatilization, followed by redescent to the ground, resulted in extensive soil salinization rendering it unsuitable for cultivation. Consequently, the affected area remains barren to this day, with only a sparse population of a few hundred residents. This story holds an extremely significant place in the Bible. Additionally, it has sparked relentless investigation by historians and archaeologists across generations. Notably, excavations near the Dead Sea have nearly perfectly aligned with the biblical account. Based on the characteristics of glassification and zirconization at the site, scientists have reconstructed the celestial event, a self-destructing asteroid, several meters in diameter, accidentally collided with Earth, plunging into the dense atmosphere. Friction caused it to ignite, and as it neared the surface, it encountered abundant oxygen, resulting in an explosion. Temperature soared to tens of thousands of degrees instantly vaporizing all life forms and water sources on the ground, leaving no opportunity for fossilization. The resulting hail of fiery fragments blanketed the entire city, and finally, a thick layer of ash, measured in meters, completely buried the city. The tragedy of Sodom and Gomorrah can be encapsulated in a pair of contrasting lines. 
Sodom, the city of sin, shrouded in smoke, where demons appear in broad daylight. Gomorrah, the wicked land, oozing with sores, where ghosts wail in the dark. When discussing Sodom, we cannot overlook the parallel with Pompeii. Both cities fell victim to unbridled debauchery, resulting in their fiery destruction. The distinction lies in Sodom. The impact of the asteroid was so intense that it instantly vaporized all life within the city, leaving no fossil evidence behind. Pompeii, the scorching volcanic ash, descending from the sky, created ideal conditions for the preservation of biological fossils. Pompeii, situated in southern Italy near the Bay of Naples, was a bustling city during ancient Roman times. It boasted exquisite architecture, luxurious mansions, public baths, theaters, temples, and even brothels and mixed-gender open-air baths. The city's residents thrived on trade, fishing, and agriculture, and it served as an important port. On August 24, 79 CE, Mount Vesuvius erupted suddenly, burying Pompeii and nearby cities like Herculaneum and Stabiae under a deluge of volcanic ash and debris. This catastrophe led to widespread devastation in Pompeii and its surrounding areas, resulting in the loss of thousands of lives. The city was covered in inorganic matter, completely extinguishing its vitality. It wasn't until the 18th century that Pompeii was rediscovered through archaeological efforts. These excavations provided deeper insights into urban life during ancient Rome. The preserved buildings, frescoes, sculptures, and other artifacts within the city have turned Pompeii into a significant tourist attraction. Visitors can walk through the ruins and witness the streets, houses, and squares of ancient Rome, as if transported back 2,000 years. Pompeii's demise remains a renowned event in ancient history, serving as a stark reminder of the destructive power of natural disasters and their impact on human civilization. From Sodom to Pompeii, if we say that both were due to sin and cursed by God, leading to their catastrophic downfall, then the human fossils, murals, and sculptures in Pompeii are enough to prove just how debauched this city truly was, so much so that it is too shameful to discuss openly. Consequently, the king later declared the site closed. Regarding the tragedy of Pompeii, we can also draw parallels with Sodom and Gomorrah using contrasting lines. Vesuvius, explosive temperament, arrogant venting, unleashing divine wrath. Pompeii, a hub of sensuality, harboring filth, transformed into instant fossilized remains. It seems that in the Old Testament era, carnal desires were considered heinous sins. However, as times change, so do societal norms. According to today's secular views, as long as an individual's actions do not harm others, anything goes. Whether it's homosexuality, gender reassignment surgery, or even one-night stands, voluntary acts are no longer considered criminal offenses, perhaps at most, moral transgressions. The evolution and transformation of the term sin have significantly diminished the emphasis on carnal desires. Instead, our focus has shifted to hatred, violence, terror, and war. Yet, thousands of years have passed, and we haven't witnessed a repeat of cities being consumed by heavenly fire. Is it due to modern humans' accelerated evolution and advanced civilization? Not necessarily. Today's world often exhibits signs of moral decay and a departure from traditional values, surpassing the atrocities of the past. Perhaps the reason we don't witness cities aflame is simply that there are more righteous people than wicked ones. Numerous righteous individuals bear the burden of humanity's fate, not only forging their own paths, but also enduring the consequences on behalf of the wicked. Yes, enduring consequences for others. Divine punishment often involves releasing demons into the mortal realm, allowing them to wreak havoc through various calamities, droughts, floods, hurricanes, blizzards, extreme heat, extreme cold, wildfires, sandstorms, plagues, and more. From this perspective, divine retribution has never truly ceased. Therefore, reverence for the divine benefits society. After all, a little more religion means a little less sin, and a little less sin means a little less divine punishment. Since the concept of divine retribution supposedly has a hundred benefits and no harm, why not embrace it? Human culture has always been intertwined with the supernatural. Ancient figures were often half-human, half-divine. 
Hereditary rulers, they invoked deities to legitimize their authority as divine right. Peasant rebels, they claimed divine inspiration to justify their actions as acting on behalf of heaven. Finally, as a closing note to reinforce the core theme of the Lamentations of Sodom, I'll leave you with a Tang poem, a bookmark for those fortunate readers who share the belief in goodness and sweet dreams. Quatrain Divine Wrath Evil accumulates until retribution arrives, punishment hesitates, but is not delayed. In a single night, the countdown begins, molten lava from heaven arrives without delay.